I uh, remember the round table. I, you know, remember the round table. Know that it's been hard for me to remain kind of calm and cool and collected about about this issue. Native people have given up so much that to me we can no longer go along to get along. We do too much of that. And in some ways, it's been necessary for us to make even the kind of progress that we've been able to make. But we've lost too much. And the Tongass is our homeland. And when I raised this issue, it was from the perspective of, you know, when you walk into a room and you're dealing with something that's important to you and that you know and that you're intimate with and all of the ways that have been described here uh, and, and more, it, it, it cuts into your heart to have to either try to explain to people what it is you're about or how you feel about the place. But if you don't, you start from the perspective as a native person of being invisible in the room. Literally invisible in the room. And so, you say, geez, if I do that, that's kind of okay. Uh, at least I won't have to get up and, 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 and say what I feel very passionately about. Uh, but ultimately, you can't do that either, because that's essentially losing more. Um, and as I began to get involved with the Thomas Futures Roundtable and saw all of the various pieces on the table, to me the glue that would hold it all together was the native place in the Thomas. The idea that if there were a point at which everybody involved said, yes, we respect that, we recognize that, we care about that, we know it's fundamental to this place. Maybe you could use that as a basis to begin to put together other pieces. Instead, for a while, and I you know, probably have to assume a lot of responsibility for that, we couldn't get our point across. Couldn't get the point across. Not that there weren't good people in the room who wanted passionately to be responsive to whatever was important in the Tongass. Uh, I hope we're there now. When a native person walks in the room and talks about the tongues, and I never wanted anything. We don't want anything from this. It's not a quid pro quo. We'll give you sacred sites if you give us this, or we'll give you that if you give us this. To us, it's ours. Fundamentally, powerfully ours. We don't need to negotiate for it. We should not negotiate for it. It should be respected and understood and accepted by all involved. And, and it's as simple and as profound as that. The idea that no more should Native people have to have hat in hand, have, have, to, have to kind of live on the margins of what are, is happening in places that we feel so powerfully about in the ways that have been described by Bob Sam and, uh, and by Al. By the way, uh, Bob is a very modest man. He, he says he's, he's I, I'm not sure the word he used, phrase he used, but uh, he's among the very best amongst us. He takes care of our ancestors. He physically goes and, and, and cares for them and shows respect and identifies and lets us know what is important in reality about, about our values. He, he, he's, he's among the very best. Uh, but we don't want anything in return. As far, I don't. I'm not here to negotiate and say, if you recognize us being native, 
we'll give you this. Or if you recognize us being native, you can have that. That's not what it's about. It's about just at the institutional level, at the organizational level, particularly at the governmental level. Because when you're all gone, when we're all gone physically, my people will still be here. <clears throat> but the Forest Service or some governmental entity will still be here. And fundamentally working with them and getting a public policy appreciation of the place of Native people in the Tongass can be among the very most powerful things we do to change the Tongass change the Tongass paradigm. The idea that uh, that in public policy someplace it says simple things like where there are Native places it would be a good idea to give some of those places Native names. Huh? That in public policy just a simple statement that says the Tongass is fundamentally a native place. This has been articulated here, where Aboriginal people come from, live, have lived for thousands of years and still live today. That their survival and our public policy recognition of them as first peoples of this land is important to our federal stewardship of this place. What would that say about our country? It would say something beautiful and profound. What would it say about us as Native people? It would allow us to hold our heads up in ways that for a long time we haven't been able to. It would allow us to feel not just within our own places. When I'm talking to Al or Bob or George or, or heaven forbid, even Marlene, uh, uh, you know, where we can be open and, 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 and know that what we say is respected and that we understand one another, the passion we feel for this place. We don't have to explain to anyone else. But I can walk into the forester's office, the regional forester, and know that he respects my place in this forest. Not me as a person, but us as Native peoples. And that their policy is built around recognizing that. That doesn't mean that, that, that there has to be special programs. It doesn't mean there has to be anything governmental that happens uh, uh, of, a, of a programmatic or or of a legal nature, but if it does, it does. That takes place in the give and take and flow of what happens in the development of public policy. But if at its core, the federal government, other institutions said, we begin from a place of respect and recognition of who you are, your history, and your future in this place. Simple proposition. But it's so hard coming. The Tongass is just a small microcosm of the reality of native <coughs> life in the state. Where everything we seek by way of recognition, by way of, 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 of reaching out, comes incredibly hard. Comes with prices that we are expected to pay when we've already given everything we've got and have very little left to hang on to as Native folks. And so I've kind of come to a place where, you know, this is good. Um, I will not feel that the Tongass Future Ground Table has, has achieved uh, any kind of significant public policy uh, change from what was the status before the round table began its efforts. But if somehow in the group, in federal policy, there emerges this sense that yes, the Tongass is a native place. We respect it, we revere it, we will let it shine through. Simple, but also powerful. We make it happen. Thank you.